I've now been wearing and using Apple Watch Series 4 for about two weeks, since just after the September 12 event at the Steve Jobs Theater. I did my initial deep dive review after a week of fairly frenzied testing. I'm revisiting it now after a second week of somewhat more typical usage, travel, transactions, tracking workouts and tasks, keeping up to speed with my life and staying connected. I'm Rene Ritchie, welcome back to Vector. It's great to chat with you again. Let's take a second look. I spent most of the last two weeks on a 44 millimeter space gray Apple Watch Series 4. I've used the Sport, as they were previously known, and the Nike Plus off and on since Series 0, and I've always liked them a lot. They've had the best price and the best haptic performance. But I also love watches, and that means loving materials, so I spent as much time, if not more, on the stainless steels, and more recently, the ceramic editions. This year, though, Absent editions, it's all been about the new gold. Now, this gold isn't the same as the original gold. That was 18 karat yellow or rose. I never got into those. I get why Apple made them. It got them into fashion and watch world conversations and gained them mindshare no aluminum or steel casing ever could. But they were ultimately so expensive and so niche that I also get why they almost immediately stopped. Impact achieved. When I first saw the new steel gold, I wasn't sure it'd be for me. I liked it, but I wasn't sure I could pull it off. Now, after wearing it for a few days, I love it, and I think almost anyone could pull it off. It's not yellow, it's not rose, it's deeper with a finish that varies between blush and bronze depending on the light. The gold Milanese band is absolutely terrific, just as you'd expect, but it also looks great with various white, off-white, black, and off-black bands as well. I also agree with John Gruber of Daring Fireball. The tactics on the steel this year feel better than ever, maybe even on par with the previously best-in-class aluminum. If you really want to push steel into the more traditional edition price range, you can pair it with some of the Hermes bands. Yeah, the lugs are going to clash just as they have since launch, but if that doesn't make your eyes bleed, a lot of the combos look terrific, especially the deep blues and blacks. Though, yeah, I'm waiting to try it with the new indigo and orange. But here's the thing, you don't have to spend anywhere nearly that much. The gold steel looks phenomenal all on its own. And yeah, if you don't care about sapphire screens and PVD coatings, you can get the gold aluminum and it looks every bit as terrific this year. It took me a little while to figure this out, but Apple has been tweaking the algorithm it uses to detect and credit you for the move ring. See, here's the thing, I'm a fidgeter. Whether I'm standing or sitting, I'm never static. At my standing desk or just standing around, I'm constantly shifting weight and position. And even when I'm sitting, it's the opposite of still. It got me into so much trouble in school, but now it's getting me credit where credit's due for my activity. So you can't fidget your way into filling the move ring, of course, but it does help you round out your results. So if you, like me, have been noticing a little more red a little more quickly, that's the reason why. Also so cool is the auto start and stop workouts. Previously, I'd forget to start or stop them all the damn time. And that meant I missed out on credit or got credit for such minimal amounts of activity. My friends would see the sharing alert, shake their heads and immediately send me back trash talk, sleepy head emoji, a pizza slice, you know, punishment for my lack of attention. But now when I head out without starting a workout, I get a tap and a gentle reminder to start the clock. Confirm it and it backfills the credit to pretty much when I started. Same when I get back and head for the water before I close out the workout. Firm tap, a gentle reminder to stop the clock. I've needed to use it more than I'm comfortable to admit. Luckily, no brain gym tracking yet, or I'd be nowhere near getting that award. And it's made a huge difference. In fact, I think I've come to rely on it. It's enough to make my watch now feel like it's smarter than I am, and I both love and hate that. When I first saw the new infograph watch face, I wasn't sure if it would be super complicated in the best sense of the word, or just overcomplicated in the worst. Turns out, I really like it. It's become a digital dashboard for my day. I prefer the amount of complications on the analog infograph, but the glanceability of the modular infograph, so I end up bouncing between them a lot. I really wish there was an option for seconds on the modular like there is on the activity face. Sometimes I just really need precise time. I also wish Apple hadn't eradicated time travel from every face that isn't solar. It renders the digital crown kind of useless on the default screen when, in a perfect world, spinning it would march the calendar complication, if present, backwards or forwards through time through your day so you could access your digitally assisted memory without having to tap through. I know it's tricky to figure out what should time Time travel and confusing for people who hit it by accident, but the off by default there if you want it settings in watchOS 4 really felt like the best of all worlds to me. I also miss not having the messages or mail complications available on Infograph. I get that they're still the old, simple versions and not the fancy new informationally dense hotness, but seeing if you had messages without having to pull down notification center and being able to tap to go right 
to them was super convenient. I'm currently using a workaround in the form of a frequent contact infograph face, which solves the easy access part, if not the glanceable new messages part. So here's hoping Apple has some hot, informationally dense new versions of messages and mail coming to infograph in the near future. You know the old joke about a couple or family sitting in the same room, but instead of talking to each other, they're using World of Warcraft or whatever in-game chat to communicate? Well, the new walkie-talkie feature in watchOS 5 is the opposite of that. First, because you'll get wicked feedback if you try to use it while lounging on the same couch, but more importantly, because it brings voice back to IM and in a way that's much more immediate than volleying pre-recordings back and forth. Yeah, it's push to talk like your grandparents next tell, but it's also a great way to send a quick but important message to a friend or family member without having to shout across rooms, up or down flights of stairs, or impossibly out windows, down streets, and across towns. The only thing restraining me from using it right now is that it can take some time to connect if you haven't used it recently. Same with Raise to Siri. It ignores me just often enough that I've gone back to saying, hey, which feels so watchOS 4. When walkie talkie works though, it's kind of magic and I kind of want to try it out in the Magic Kingdom. While I still can't replace my iPhone, increasingly Apple Watch is replacing more and more of the brief, repetitive, but important tasks that were previously the exclusive domain of my iPhone. And that means I don't have to go into my pocket. Checking the time, glancing at my next appointment or reminder, bossing around HomeKit. Okay, the front door is locked. Or tapping to pay pretty much everywhere. iPhone is still the most critical device in my life, but Apple Watch is the one I now feel the deepest personal connection to. It's the one I feel naked when I'm not wearing it, and the one I hesitate the most to trust to the new betas every summer. Apple Watch Series 4 has been likened to iPhone 4 in terms of the revelation of its industrial design. Interestingly, that was also the last tethered version of the iPhone before iOS 5 took it to the iCloud. WatchOS 5 is still further away, but looking at everything it can do, you can sort of start to see that future. It's already the closest thing we have to external cybernetics, a connected little artificially intelligent module on our wrist that securely, privately, learns all it can about us so it can help us be and become the best us. And if you're interested in helping drive us towards that future, then check out Brilliant. It's a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a futurist. Instead of passively listening to lectures, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems. And Brilliant provides the tools and frameworks that you need to tackle these challenges. Algorithms, neural networks, AI, coding, all of it. Brilliant's thought-provoking content based around breaking up complexities into bite-sized, understandable chunks will lead you from curiosity to mastery. So what are you waiting for? Check it out, brilliant.org slash vector. Thank you so much, Brilliant. So that's my experience so far wearing Apple Watch every day, all day for the last two weeks. I'm gonna check in again at the end of a month, at the end of a few months, at the end of half a year, and so on, so that I can give you constant and evolving feedback. But in the meantime, I wanna ask you what you think. Have you been using Apple Watch Series 4? If so, what are your thoughts? If not, why not? Hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments and let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching.